we moved to Oakville in 1938, and I would have been about 17. And uh, we moved from New Toronto, 1313 Street in New Toronto. Uh, we owned two houses there, 13 and 15. And uh, I don't know why my parents decided to go to Oakville, but I guess they wanted to go into business, you know, to start business. Although the depression, there was no money around at that time. When you come a certain age, you had to go and serve, I think, three or six months in the Army, if you hadn't already joined up. So I beat them to it. Me and my brother went into the service from uh, when we lived at the old English Inn. And I joined the Navy in 19, the spring of 42. And he was in the Army. And I was drafted to Halifax in June 42. And he was sent out west at the same time. And when I said goodbye to him, I never seen him again. Because he was, uh, he lost his life in the invasion of southern France. And he's buried just outside Marseille in France. From Halifax, we were drafted to HMCS Niobe in Scotland. That was the Canadian naval base in Scotland. And it was a former uh, insane asylum up on a hill in Greenwich, Scotland. But that was the Canadian base. You know, Canadians were drafted to there, and then they were sent to either into the Royal Navy or the Canadian Navy. We had very few ships at the start of the war. I think we had about four or five destroyers. And we lost most of them during the Battle of the Atlantic. There's the Ottawa, the Fraser, the Saguenay had the stern blown off it. Uh, St. Clair was sunk. The, of course, the Athabascan, that's the one I guess you'd hear most of. All ships are just a gun platform, no matter what they are. <laughs> Battleship, a sloop, or a destroyer, or a corvette. But uh, these were, anti-submarine ships, and they were used for mine sweeping too. And uh, the one I was on was built in about just the early 1930s, when it, it was one of the earlier models. Now I can't tell you why they built sloops, whether they were for the climate, you know, hot weather climate or what they were for. But a lot of the newer ones were well-armed ships they had twin turrets, four and aft, 4.5, and they had all the modern conveniences like uh, hedgehogs, squid gear. They had degaussing gear on it. And of course, the ship I was on was one of the earlier models, so they had only one uh, 4.5 on the bow and the 4.5 on the stern. And of course, he had the anti-aircraft guns and the uh, uh, depth charges. There, we, I had uh, there was five Canadians on there. There was me and three other Stokers, and the doctor on the ship was from Canada, from out west. I was in the Stoker branch, so I was in the boiler room and the engine room. I wasn't handling any guns or anything like that, depth charges or anything like that. Only if we were not on duty and the alarm went, you had to turn to and go and be a, a fire watch, you know, just in case there's a fire or pass ammunition. There was a, a Stoker PO in the boiler room and a Stoker. And I was down there with an English Stoker, his name was Clark, Nobby Clark. He was the one that I would serve most of the time down in the boiler room with. And I was paid more than he was. 
However, <laughs> when we were in the British Navy, they would only give us half of our Canadian pay, which was $20 a month. So you can see, you hear about drunken sailors. How do you get drunk on $20 a month? <laughs> the PO was in charge of the boiler room, and he told you pretty well what to do, you know. Put on another burner, take, shut a burner down. All depends how much steam they wanted or how fast they were going. And you had to clean the burners with a poker. And when we was off Africa, I think they recorded a 140 degrees one night in the boiler room. When we were cleaning these uh, oil burners, you had to knock the, the carbon off so it would burn right. And the oil, burning the oil, come flying back at you. Put holes in your coveralls. We had oil-fired uh, Yarrow boilers. They called them Admiralty boilers. They were uh, water tube boilers. You could get steam up very fast with them because mm. the, the tubes were only about that big. And there was quite a few of them. They were mostly all tubes. So, there was water vessels at the bottom. The tubes were connected to a steam vessel at the top. And uh, I think the pressure was about 225 pounds a square inch. And we had twin turbines for engines, Parsons tur turbines. But it wasn't a very fast ship, believe it or not, even with turbines. No, you see a lot of the world. When we patrolled off uh, Africa, we went 100 miles up the Congo River. Now why, I don't know. And there was quite a current coming down there. We had quite a time to get up there. And the town uh, we went to was Matadi on the Congo River. It was just above Angola. To this day, I don't know why we went up there, because I don't think there's any submarines in the Congo River. There was some good reason, whether it was the closest port, I don't know. When we approached land, we didn't see land. We come in, here's all this blue ocean. And all of a sudden, here's this wall of brown water. What the heck is this? Where are we? We still couldn't see land. We didn't know where we are until we approached the, the, the mouth of the Congo River. And that water must have been out miles and miles out into the ocean, that water from the Congo River, muddy water. We went into Casablanca because we patrolled off West Africa for four or five months. And when we went in there, the, there was all these ships sitting on the bottom being sunk. I don't know whether they were French ships or what they were. But we never got ashore there. And, uh, no, I've seen ships with holes in them as big as a house. And Navy ships with the stern blown off when we escorted all these uh, tankers from the UK to the Dutch West Indies, Willemstad, Curacao. Uh, we were 30, 31 days at sea. We left uh, London there and picked up the convoy, went down through the Irish Sea, Bristol Channel, St. George's Channel, and down off the coast of France, past Gibraltar, and we had uh, the 42nd Escort Group. We had four American DEs, destroyer escorts, and a Polish destroyer. And the Polish destroyer got contact with a submarine, they sank it, and it was an Italian submarine. They'd recovered uh, one of the crew's lungs and an Italian coffee can. They had to have proof that they'd sunk a ship, you know, or they couldn't claim. 
But that was the first trouble we ran into. And we were all right until we started to go across the Atlantic when the aircraft, we had aircraft carry, uh, coverage so far out in the Atlantic. And when they couldn't come out any farther, then we started. Every night after dark, we were attacked by submarines. And our ship had to go to the stern of the convoy because we had the Captain D on it. He was in charge of the the group. Every night we dropped back and night after night that happened halfway across the Atlantic. And we lost uh, three tankers and uh, one of them got hit just back of the bow but it kept going. They, they must have had a good crew on board because they must have sealed it off and that hole in that thing was as big as the house. Right back of the bow. And all, most of these ships had uh, nets strung out on divots alongside the ship to stop any, or well, hope to stop any torpedoes from hitting them. No, that's the worst time we had. One uh, convoy from uh, Britain down to North Africa. We con most of the time when we went to North Africa it was convoying troops there and back. And we were attacked on the way back once off the Bay of Biscay by a couple of German bombers, very slow. But the um, HMS Victorious, the aircraft carrier, was with us. HMS Warspite, the battleship, was with us, and the Belfast, the cruiser Belfast, plus our group, the 42nd Escort Group. <laughs> These two bombers come over very slow, gee. and two sea fires took off from the Victorious, and I never seen them again. I don't know where they went. But one of these airplanes, these bombers, dropped a stick of bomb, and that just missed the Victorious. Believe it or not. But boy, oh boy, uh, the uh, the aircraft barrage up in the air are just monstrous. Back and forth, back and forth, you know. But we didn't hit nothing. <laughs> and I never seen the uh, these bombers again. And the only other incident that I can think of is uh, I come off watch, the midnight watch, at four o'clock in the morning. It was dark out. And the rudder jammed on the ship. And here we are going around in a circle in front of these great big troop transports. And they had to put the running lights on. Now, you know, <laughs> no ships had lights on because they don't, didn't want to be seen. And here we are going around with the lights in front of these big troop ships coming down on top of us. But anyway, we got out of it. They fixed the rudder and away we went. Uh, coming back, we, uh, it only took about two weeks to come back, but we picked up a baby flat top aircraft carrier for aircraft protection. No, we had no trouble coming back. It took about two weeks coming back. But we come back on a shorter route, we come directly back to the, the UK, Halifax, VJ Day. Yeah. Were there big celebrations? There wasn't because of VE Day. Because me and my wife was there in VE Day and I, w I was taking an ERA course in HMCS Staticona. And uh, they paraded all the uh, people in the barracks down to the commons to have a ceremony for the end of the war. Then they disbanded it all and they, uh, everybody went down into Halifax. The same as the ships, all the Canadian ships. Of course they let the crews ashore. And me and the wife walked down Spring Garden Road with a couple of friends we had. And we stopped there, 
and the kid come along with a pair of shoes. He says, you want to buy a new pair of new shoes? I didn't know where he got them from. I says, well, and they, they were my size. He says, oh, you can have them for two dollars. It's okay. And I never knew what was going on. And we finally left this little place where we, we'd stopped, walked down to Barringham Street. No, oh, my goodness. They were breaking windows and taking stuff out of the stores and everything else. They uh, unloaded the liquor store down there. And of course, what happened, the businesses went and closed all their, all the stores up, all the restaurants and all of them. So I guess the boys took it on themselves to go and get the drink. <laughs> No, they cleaned out the liquor store, and I don't know about the brewer's retail. But anyway, they told everybody to get back to their barracks and their ships after that. The only celebrations that we had, that we, we were all invited to HMCS York for, uh, you know, get-together. And the mayor of Toronto was there. I think his name was Saunders at that time. I'm not sure. And that was it. Yeah, that was it.